We have talked about the school. We've talked about what the school requires from you as a teacher. We've talked about the student, understanding how the student learns the language. We have also talked about the classroom, how to design it and how to think about hierarchies that exist in the classroom. Now we're going to talk about the teacher. You are the teacher. The teacher is an essential part of this course. We're going to talk about how you can do things to give maximum output. So now let's dive in and let's talk about the teacher. In talking about the teacher, there are a couple of topics that we're going to talk about. And I'm going to highlight a few before we just dive in. First of all, I'm going to give a summary, just give you an overview of what a teacher is supposed to do in class, how you are supposed to approach teaching, some of the mindsets you need to have when you walk in class. And then also, we're going to talk about the methodology. We're going to look at the process, how to be systematic in your teaching. Next, we are going to look at certain things like TPT. TPT is really important because I'm going to take certain aspects of the methodology and I'm going to dive deep into it. We will also talk about lesson planning. And then the icing on top of the cake, we're going to talk about classroom management and class control. Let's just dive right in. Let's not waste much time. Starting right off, we are going to talk about how to teach. I'm going to give you an oversimplified version. I'm going to give you a huge summary of what you should think about when it comes to teaching. And the first thing is that you need to demonstrate necessary knowledge about your subject. What exactly are you going to teach if you do not know it? At least do your research, know what you're going to teach. At a higher level, this is even more crucial because at lower levels, you're teaching simple stuff like animals, like colors, like shapes. And these are things we know already. So at the lower level, one of the things you need to consider is doing some research on pronunciations so that you know that it corresponds to what your school requires. Just notice that I said it has to be something that correlates to the kind of school you are in because it depends on the requirements of your school. If your school requires a British pronunciation, that's what you need to research on. If they require an American accent kind of thing, you need to do some research on that. Next, you must use necessary resource. It's important to use resources for your teaching. If you need songs, if you need some toys, if you need some flashcards, if you need a TV, if you need a Bluetooth speaker, you need to use items that aid your teaching. Next, you must prepare adequately for your lesson. This has nothing to do with your research and demonstrating knowledge about your topic. After you know what you're going to teach, you must structure your lesson. You have to prepare and put everything together so that you know that when you sing a song from that, you're going to go to introduction or maybe you're going to do your introduction first. Then after that, you're going to sing a song. Then you're going to play a game. Then you're going to do this. It has to be structured. And the way to do that is to prepare adequately for your lesson. Now, next, you have to make sure your teaching is engaging. Your teacher must be engaging. Ah, nobody likes a boring teacher. Are you going to have everyone fall asleep in class and say that the kids don't like to learn? Try some means. Do something. Bring an umbrella to class. Wear a jacket that covers your whole body. Do something that's engaging, at least. Use methods, play games, do something. Don't be boring. Next, you have to be progressive in your lesson. When you start teaching, don't jump to step Z before you come back to step A. It has to be progressive. If you're going to teach a sentence, teach the key words in the sentence first before you put together the sentence. Sometimes if it's possible to break apart the sentences, Teach them in broken down parts before you put them together into a whole sentence. So be progressive. You must know when to move on from one thing to another. Sometimes we enjoy one step so much we lose track of time and then we waste the rest of the lesson. Also, you, know, you need to know when one thing is passing away and the kids are no longer interested in that. You need to move on to something else. Sometimes when you're teaching, you realize that, okay, this isn't working. You need to, as a teacher, you need to figure out that quickly. You need to figure that out and move on to something else. So as a teacher, you need to be very sensitive in class. The next is that you must keep your composure as a teacher and demonstrate command over the class through your disposition. You need to stand like you're a teacher. 
You need to walk like you're a teacher. You need to speak. The volume of your, and, and tone of your voice, it has to be like that of the teacher. The teacher can't be like, can you pass me the ball? No, you need to have a commanding voice. Let the students know that you are in charge of the classroom and of the lesson. But then, don't overdo it. Next is, you must be consistent across board with what you do in class, with your teaching, with your discipline, and everything else. It's not like today the teacher looks all happy and want to play with me. The next thing the teacher looks moody and sad. You need to be consistent. When you say something, it has to mean something. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Else the kids, the students, they will take you for granted. Next, you must reward the doers. When one kid that's something amazing, something good, responds, pays attention, gives a good answer. You have to reward that. And in rewarding that, you must praise their attitude and the process they used to do it. It's not necessarily about praising the person so that they have a big head and feel they're awesome. Yes, but let them know that they took a good approach to doing it. So it will encourage them to continue to do that. It will also encourage the other students to also take a good approach to get good results. It's not just that the person is awesome. I know sometimes we will say that, oh, this person is so good. Yes, but you have to point to the fact that they answered a question. They paid attention in class. They did something that the teacher requires. Finally, it's hard being a teacher, you know. So, in class, don't take anything personally. 